Right, what we're going to do, well, over the next couple of weeks I'll explain, because I don't usually get all of this, what's on this handout I'll just give you done in one week. So, but what we're going to do is look at a range of three phase problems that include a balanced delta, which is a bit of a revision because I think we went through that last week anyway. Um, three phase balanced star with the neutral, three phase star with neutral unbalanced, three phase balanced delta with a loss of line fault on it, okay, and a three phase balanced star neutral with a loss of line. We're going to analyze the circuits. We're going to use values that are available on the rig over there so I can actually connect that circuit up and we can show and prove that our calculations are within experimental error. True. Yep, that's the, that's the intention anyway. So we've got some meters up the back, I've got a couple of watt meters and things so we can measure power and what have you. All right, so that's the plan. Um, and then, because that won't take all the next week, what I've got is, a, is my first foray into some typical exam questions as well towards the end of next week's session. All right? So, so that's the next couple of weeks anyway. So, what we're going to do, and I'm just going to change one thing, we're going to go 200 volts. Yeah, so three resistive loads of 1950 ohms connected in delta to a three phase generator with a line voltage of 200 volts at 50 hertz. Yeah. Determine the current flowing in each load, the line current and the total power dissipated by the load. So the best way to start, as always, is with some kind of little circuit diagram with these kind of problems. So we draw something up, we've got a delta connected load, like so. I'm not going to draw the generator because that's not necessary really. We've got a line voltage, EL. 200 volts and each of the load resistors are 1950. Yep, each. And the question's asking you to calculate the current flowing in each load. Well, as they're equal, all, all the currents flowing in each load will be equal. So up we want I phase yeah, for each load, and we want the line current IL. And again, because that's balanced, that will be equal. All right. So what I want you to do, if you already had a go at something like that, is make a start on calculating those things and we want the total power as well and while you're doing that I'll start to get the practical gear ready so that we can um, put build that up. The other thing we'll do is I'll change the um, order here a bit. We'll do both the delta ones and then I'll change over a star and that'll mean I don't have to change the wiring about so much. So we'll we'll do we'll do the balanced delta and we'll do the delta with loss of line fault and then we'll go back and do the star ones. All right. What have you done to affect these calculations? Then? You calculate it first. I phase, what's it equal to, Roger? BL of R. Yeah. 200. Over 1950 equals. Sorry? 0.103 amps, which is 103. 
So each, each phase you're expecting to get 103 milliamps, yep. Next. My L. Yeah, route three on IP. Route three times a hundred and three. Yeah, yeah, you could call it S, but that's actually power in this case because there's only resistive. Yeah. I've actually got to be out of measure that tonight because I can't think of what it well. uh, We would have measured, we would have probably measured um, what one one phase is anyway. So they ain't got a three phase what me. Alright? But we can certainly prove that we, or hopefully we get 103 milliamps and uh, 178, uh, 103 milliamps in each phase and 178 milliamps in a line yep. with 200 volt line voltage okay right we're going to jump forward now so i think that's the fourth problem which is uh three phase star balance star with loss of line that's two three, four. Okay, so we're going to have a look at this three phase balance delta with loss of line fault. So the load connected in delta as per problem one developed a fault where one line has gone out the circuit. So all I'm going to do over there is take one phase off. Yeah, so it don't really matter which one I pick, um, you'll still see, should see the same effect in the other in the other two phases. Alright, so sketch a diagram of the fault system and determine the current flowing in the remaining lines, the new current flowing in each load, the new power dissipated by each load, compare it with problem one, the new power dissipated by the system to the total power under fault conditions, and compare that with problem two. Alright, so we just draw the system out first. Here's our balance delta load. Still 1950. Okay. I'm going to leave this phase off the bottom corner so that we've just got one line. That one's disconnected. 200 volts. Next. Yeah. And I'm going to do it so that's red, yellow, and the blue one's going to be disconnected. Alright. So we want to calculate the current flowing in here and here. If there is any. It should be the same, should it not? What is that? What is that turned into, really? If you think about it. Taking that third phase away. We've got another current down here. 
off like that. And if you look at that, that's the same current down there as there. So if that's, we call that I1, this would be I2, and that I2 is going to flow down there and um, be exactly the same current because it can't go down its own face. So this is going to be... join back up again and be the same as that so you'd expect these two currents to be the same yeah. but these two be different you've got a single phase mode there now really yeah but where well, you've got one element connected in parallel with the other two in series All right. so have a go at those calculations and then we'll see what we will um, summarize them and check them on a read Right, again, 200 volts, not a, st not a state in the first problem, 300, and 1950 of the Alright, so a fairly simple um, situation of a loss of line fault turns that really into a single phase load of one of the, one of the windings or one of the resistors in parallel with the other two. So you calculate it. I1 initially, calculated I2, and added them both together. I mean, when I done my solution, I went down the route of um, saying that IL, I calculated RT, so that would be another way to tackle it. Calculate the total resistance of those three as they stand, and then done. 200 over, I come out at 1300 ohms, and then 200 over that to give you the to give you the line current, and then calculate the other two. In actual fact, I think the way you've gone about it is probably better. But that was the order I, I was just around the order I asked for them in. Yeah, it doesn't matter what order you calculate them in. If that was an exam question, that wouldn't matter what order you calculate them. In. All right. And then you found your powers, and like you said, you actually found the total power that you get once you lost one phase is about half what it was when you had the, when you had three phases. Right. And if you lost the second phase, you'd have no voltage at all anyway in a delta system. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You notice we're not doing anything around unbalanced loads in um, delta. That's because they're, they're a bit tricky and, and they're never really intentional. So we're, um, rather than, I mean, this is unbalanced in the sense that you lost a phase, but I'm not going too deep into putting different values of resistors in a, in a delta system. All right. So, what I want you to do now, while I have one more go at trying to get this um, system to, to measure some current and what have you, is look at the star connected balance system. So, same three 1950 loads are now connected in star to a three phase a neutral generator with a line voltage of 200 volts. We're going to go with at 50 hertz. Determine the new current flowing in each load, so when I say new current, the load that's different from having connected in delta. So the load current, the load, uh, the new total power dissipated, and the current flowing in a neutral conductor. Yeah. All right. Shouldn't be any, but do the calculations to prove that. All right. So we're looking at the same three resistors in star connection. We're going to have a neutral. So, we've still got a line voltage of 200 volts. 
yet. This is the neutral. So this will be the phase. And the line current is the same as the phase current. And it's star connected. Yeah. So where can we start to calculate I, the uh, line current? And that will be the same for the balance. So, so I, IL is equal to. Yeah. What is EP? So it's EP over R. Yeah. But what is EP in this case? Yeah, EL over root 3. Is that what you've done, Roger? Yeah. Yeah. So we're talking about 200 over root 3 all over 1950 equals. What do we get? 59 milliamps. Everyone agree who's got that bar? Yeah. And then, uh, power in each load. So that's, that's going to be the same, because it's balanced. So, power, phase power, is equal to, how do you calculate that? Okay, let's do it that way then. PT is 3 times EP Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, 3 times 200 over root 3 times 0.059 equals. Equally, you could have done um, I squared times the resistance to so squared your current you calculated. Um, you should have still get the same answer. Uh, yeah, you'd have to multiply. That would give you um, the power for each each what well, each one, and then you multiply it by three to get the total. So you do I the uh, the phase current squared, which you calculated at 59 milliamps. Yeah, and multiply that by the resistance. Do you remember there's always the three different ways you can get power? V times I, I squared R, V squared of R. Or, or Z if we're talking in P. Alright. So, this thing about the current in the neutral. I1 is equal to 0 0.059 angle 0 degrees. I'm assuming this is what you've done. Yeah. So we want to convert that to rectangular. Must be well they're all gonna be milliamps, so I'm gonna change that actually. I'm gonna put that as fifty-nine milliamps. So that's fifty-nine plus J uh
Have I done something confusion, Warren? What? Which bit? You just used 200. Oh, you calculated what the phase voltage was by dividing 200 by root 3 and then used that. That's not a problem, doing that. Um, the thing is, if you... The only, the only slight issue is you do 200 over root 3 and you round it to 155 and then you're applying that error in another calculation whereas if you put it back in as 200 over root 3 you're then going to round the, the final answer as opposed to having rounded twice. All right, But you're still not going to be far out enough to get the question wrong. All right, That's, But you should be aware of that. All right, yeah. So, so that's the that's one one current, and then we've got another current I two. That's fifty nine milliamps, angle one hundred and twenty degrees. That needs converting. And I three, fifty nine milliamps, uh, angle minus one hundred and twenty degrees. And that would need convert. So what are they? 0 0.059. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Anyone done that? Exact, but that'd be close enough for you to say, yeah, they cancel out no current flowing in the neutral, which is what we would expect. While I go and um, set up the loo to be star connected, okay, have a go at an unbalanced load problem. So we've got the load from the previous problem has now changed. So we've got um, unbalanced. We'll have 1950 ohms on the first phase. We'll make that the red. Yeah, the top one, and then 950 on the yellow, and 3770 on the blue. All right. If these loads are still connected in star, do a three-phase of neutral generator with a line voltage of 200 volts at 50 hertz. Determine the new current flowing in each load and the new current flowing in the neutral conductor. Yep. Okay. So if you do that, I'll uh, go and set up for uh, So, this time we've got an unbalanced load, put 1950 on one phase. Line 50. On another phase, three seven seven zero oh. on the third phase. Our neutral current. We've still got two hundred volts line. Two hundred over root three for phase. Yeah. And we want to know the individual line currents I one, I two, I three, 
I know I am. Yep. So how are you going about doing that then? We start with I1. So, what are you done? BP over R1. Yeah. So that's 200 over root 3 over 1950 equals. And that should be 59 milliamps, yeah? Same as it was. Yep. Second one, I2, is, or we can go BL over root 3 over R2, which is 200 over root 3 over 950 equals. And we need to qualify that now with zero, 120, yeah, and I3, PL over root 3, divided by R3, 200 over root 3, divided by 3770. Sorry? 31 milliamps. Do you agree with that, Ben? Yep. And that'll be angle. Mine's on the top. Yep. And then IN is I1 plus I2. I3. So we've got to convert each of those to um, rectangular form. That's the easiest way to do it. Anyway, 59 angle, 0 degrees. Converted. Uh, 122 angle, 120 degrees. Converted. And 31 angle. Mine's 120 degrees to convert. What do they come out to? Yeah, I'm going to go 59 for because I've got mine in milliamps then, yeah? But don't make any difference, you'll end up with the same answer in the end, right? Yeah, that one's going to be 0, J. Yeah, but if you, that'll be, um, 105K. Okay? 106J then, yeah? <laughs> right. And then... Two, so what's that? We've got the same number of significant figures. Yeah. All right. So then we add them up. So 59 take away 61 take away 16. Sorry. Minus. And then uh, 0 plus 106 minus 26.9, so 106 minus 26.9. 
79.5 plus you know. right just before we do that if we just think about these these three currents for a minute in terms of a some kind of diagram it's going to go on another page so we've got 59 at zero That's worth 59. We've got um, 122 at 120 away from that. So we're talking about a positive 120 up that way somewhere. Yeah. And then the other one is 30 watt. How many? Yeah, 30. What was it, Roger? So it's slightly shorter than that. Yeah? And the angles aren't spot on. That's a sketch. Yeah? So, resultant of these two will come in there. And the result of that with the third one coming there somewhere. I hope that can come out like that anyway. So if we can if we now convert these final That minus 17 point, minus 17 plus 79.5. And if you think about it, right, just go back to the diagram, we've got a negative real part looking at this resultant vector here. Let me put that in green. If we resolve that into its real part and its imaginary part, the real part is negative and quite short imaginary part as long. Can you see how a little sketch of the diagram can help to see whether you're in the right ballpark and you ain't got a problem with your positive and negative numbers? If, we, if you now convert that um, minus 17 uh, plus 79.5 J back to polar form So I n is equal to minus seventeen plus seventy nine point five J amperes uh, milliamperes because I went milliamps, didn't I? Converting that to polar, what do we get? Does that look about right from what we've done on our diagram? 81 milliamps. Fairly long line there, because this one was like 100 and something, weren't it? And you'd, but you'd say you weren't far out there with 102 degrees. Yeah. So that, that's always worthwhile. Just a quick sketch of the angles there. Just see if what you've got. So when we when we when we do the unbalanced load, we're going to expect to see um, 81.4 milliamps flowing in the neutral. Yep. All right. So let's have a look. See what we get. So I want um, 1950 on the red face. Well, we're going to do the balance first. Just check what what you got, whether we got what you expected.
Right. Uh, red phase current. And, and phase voltage. Yellow phase current and line voltage. You won't take any new the watts. Okay. And this one down here, doing the blue phase current. And that one is the neutral current. At the moment, we've got 1950 on all three. Yep. Someone said um, 200 over root 3 is 155, wasn't it? I don't think so. Yeah, 115. 115, yeah, sorry. It's got about 200 volts. Yeah. We got n nothing in the neutral. We got 58 milliamps on the blue phase. 59 milliamps on there and 61 on there. Experimental errors, they're all the same. It's a balanced load. Yeah. All right? Good. And I do really think that's worthwhile to see it because you can go on doing calculations with different numbers all the time. But if you actually see that, that makes a lot of difference. Just can't stop that video. Right guys, what are we doing? How do we do this then? Current flowing. So I1. In the elevator room 3. 5 0. 59 milliamps. If you're using DL over root 3, you're, all you're using is line to neutral. So that's DL over root 3, so it's only one. That voltage is only across one. Yeah. Yeah. No, e, no, it's all, you've got EL over root 3 between all three phases in the neutral. The 200 is between phases. Yeah. So effectively, in a, in a complete system, you've got three lots of 200. You've got three lots of 200 over root 3. Yeah. Okay. So that's 59 milliamps as well. Triangle. 120. Yeah. I N is I one plus I two. So we've got the fifty nine angle zero inverter, fifty nine angle one hundred twenty inverter. Negative twenty nine point five. Both of those are minutes. Yeah, if we add them together. So fifty nine. Minus 29.5, 29.5 I think, isn't it? Plus 51.1 J. Convert back to polar.
60. All right. So the magnitude of the neutral current is the magnitude of the current that's missing for the third phase. The angle's different because it's a combination of both angles. It's halfway between the two. And if you think about it, is it not going to be halfway between the two? We've got... If, I, the, if that's the red phase... And that's the yellow phase that's there. When we do that... The result is going to split it in half, split that angle in half, isn't it? Yeah? Because that because the two lines now are the same length, we have got a balanced load on each of those two phases. Yeah. No. no. All right. So power for each phase. P phase is equal to, I'm going to do I squared R for the change. Not point oh five nine squared one nine five O. Six point seven nine. That's each. Therefore, total power PT is equal to two times six point seven nine, which is thirteen point some odd. Thirteen point six. What was the total power when all three loads were connected? That'll be number two. Twenty point four. Yeah. So as a as you've just lost the power for one phase. It, it, it's always going to deal with imbalance better than delta because you've got the neutral connected. If you take the neutral away, then other things happen. Because if we, if we look at this diagram, yeah, where if we, if we lift that off, take a neutral away, We've, we've just got two phases connected in series with one lot of 200 volts. Completely different. I mean, two, so you've got 200 over 2 times 1950. What did that come out as? Two hundred over 1950 times 2. Yeah, now square that and multiply it by 2 times 1950. 164. 200 over. 200 over 2,900. No. It's 100 short, 3,000. Three, two in series. What do you say that come out? 30 milliamps, is it? And then square it. And then multiply by 2,950.
Let me all count you out, you're wrong. Got 200 volts. Divided by. Fifty two, fifty one milliamps square up and multiply by two times one nine five. Total power then is ten watts, ten point two five watts. Yep. So without the new with the, with the neutral connected, when you lose the line, lose one line. You get 13.6 watts if you, if you didn't have the neutral. So if you think of it as a heater box, yeah. If you if you got the neutral in there, you can get one phase down, and you're going to get 13.6 watts. If you don't have the neutral, you only get get 10 watts. If you lose a phase. You don't want to lose a phase anyway. But the 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 point is the situation is totally different if you take that neutral away. So. So three phase neutral with a star, three phase star with a neutral connected deals better with unbalanced loads. And that's why, because they wire your house is generally only on one phase and that's got the neutral. And that's why that system works. That doesn't have to be perfectly balanced. Because they, they're, they're generally a balanced load anyway. And so that's just an extra conductor. Yeah. All right. So, should we call it a day there for today, boys, or not? Yeah. Oh, we haven't we haven't checked this one out in terms of is that what you actually get? So let's just go and have a look at that. There. 